Good morning. In this week's Sidra of a tall dot, we read about the most enigmatic of the Avot Yitzchak, about whom the least is written. Their entire Sidrot devoted to Avraham, even more Sidrot devoted to Yaakov. But to Yitzchak, we have only a small slice, only this Sidra. And even towards the end of this Sidra, the focus has become the life of Yaakov. The one thing the Torah does tell us about Yitzchak, and it's perhaps somewhat surprising, is that Yitzchak was a man who was fabulously wealthy. He inherited a great deal of wealth from his father, Abraham. But the Torah tells us that when he plants, he gets mea sharim 100 times the estimated quantities that they expected. He has there's this massive uh, boom. From there, he goes into uh, livestock, cattle and sheep. From there, all kinds of avudah rabah, all kinds of businesses. He buys up all kinds of things in the area. He has wells. He's just this uh, absolute tycoon. To the extent that the Philistines, jealous of him, in fact, drive him out of the area. He leaves the central city of the Philistines and goes to live in the, on, a, on a country estate, so to speak, where he continues with his business activities. But the, the interesting thing, when you see this great wealthy per- person, Yitzchak, the question is, what does the Torah focus on? So the Torah tells us this Meir Sharim, there was a hundred times the amount. So the first question I say to ask is, why is he even estimating? This is not an investment portfolio. He's not trying to predict the share prices. He's not pitching it to potential investors. So why is Yitzchak Tale working out for himself how much land it's going to produce? So Rashi says the answer is for Masrot. Maaser, 10% of every crop is given to the levy. And he says for Maaser, he worked out that he would give 10% to Hashem. The Shla, Shnei Luchot Habrit, has a problem with this. He says, not so fast. We find in Pirkei Avot, Al Taser Umadot, do not give tithes through estimation. If what you're doing here, Yitzchak, is estimating as to what the uh, tithing should be, as to what the Maaser is going to be, that's insufficient. You want to get Maaser? Wait until you've harvested and work it out exactly. Don't just do an estimation. So his first answer is to say that it wasn't in fact the Maaser Yitzchak was estimating, that he would have worked out properly, but it was the Truma. The Maaser is the 10% you give to the Levi, and the Truma is the amount that you give to the Kohen. And I'm being deliberately vague because the Torah is deliberately vague. Maaser, the name itself, means a tenth, whereas Truma just means lifted up what is given, the gift that you give to the Kohen. And uh, the Torah does not give any measurement for it whatsoever. In fact, I say, just say, technically speaking, if you give the tiniest amount, one grain, that can uh, take care of your obligation for your entire crop. The rabbis set guidelines. They said a generous person will give 2.5%, a regular person 2%, a stingy person 1.67%. But the idea is that it really is up to you, and therefore Yitzchak estimated how much it would produce so he could already give to the Kohen and obviously he would have used quite a generous estimation but that's something he wanted to preempt. The second idea that the Shla says is that it wasn't for the Maaser that he was obligated on but in fact going beyond his obligations. You see technically speaking the mitzvah of Maaser only really kicks in when we're speaking about finished produce that is in your home or in your granary that you processed that you brought in through the front door. When it's still in the field, and let's say you've got workers working in the field who will be eating some of it, that is uh, something that we do. We allow the workers to eat whilst they work. So you don't have to give Maaser on that yet. Yitzchak wanted to make sure that every single grain that he harvested, he was giving Maaser on. And therefore, he does the estimation even from the beginning, so that from day one, he can be giving his 10%, not only on what he's obligated, that of course he's going to give but even on the things that he is not obligated. And so we see about Yitzhak, about whom so little is written, his wealth, and within his wealth we see that he is constantly connecting that to Hashem. He has this awareness that everything he has comes from Hashem. Everything he has, in a sense, returns to Hashem. And he's keeping that cycle of Hashem uh, blessing him with wealth, of him reconnecting that blessing to Hashem, whether it's through the Maser, whether it's through the Truma, whether it's through the Maser, then in fact he was not even obligated in. But he does anyway, out of his generosity, out of a sense of responsibility and commitment. Shabbat Shalom.